If the Great Pyramid were built today, with modern cranes, laser measurements, and computer modeling, it would still be considered an engineering miracle. Now here's the uncomfortable question. How did people 4,500 years ago do it? Without steel, electricity, or machines? Because when you look closely at the Great Pyramid, it doesn't just look ancient. It looks deliberate, calculated, almost unreasonably precise. And that's why some people say it's impossible. Let me be very clear from the start. When scientists say something feels impossible, we don't mean it violates physics. We mean it violates our expectations. The Great Pyramid of Giza was completed around 2560 BCE. That's a time when the wheel was barely in use in Egypt. A time with no iron tools, no engines, no electricity, no computers. And yet, this structure stood as the tallest building on Earth for almost 4,000 years. Think about that. Empires rose. Empires collapsed. Languages disappeared. And the pyramid stayed. Now people often jump to extremes. Either it was aliens or it was just brute force. Both explanations miss the point. Because the real mystery of the Great Pyramid is not its size, it's its precision. The pyramid is aligned to true north with an error of just a few arc minutes. That's not guesswork. That's astronomy. Its base is level to within a couple of centimeters across 230 meters. Even modern construction teams struggle with that. So the real question becomes unavoidable. What kind of minds designed this? What kind of knowledge system made it possible? And once you ask that question seriously, the pyramid stops being a pile of stones and starts looking like something else entirely. When people stand in front of the Great Pyramid, their brain immediately fails to process the scale because numbers don't feel real until you slow them down. The Great Pyramid is made of approximately 2.3 million stone blocks. Each block weighs on average 2.5 tons. Some weigh much more. Now pause. That means the total mass of the pyramid exceeds 6 million tons. This is not a monument. This is a mountain built by humans. People often say, well, they just used a lot of workers. But that answer avoids the real question. Because moving stone is not the hardest part. Coordinating time, labor, and precision is. Let's do a simple thought experiment. If the pyramid was built in about 25 years, that means placing roughly 250 blocks per day, every day, without pause, for decades. Each block must be cut, transported, positioned, aligned, fixed permanently, no mistakes, no second chances. Now imagine doing this without. Engines, hydraulics, steel tools, computers, blueprints in the modern sense. This is not chaos. This is industrial scale planning, which tells us something uncomfortable. The ancient Egyptians did not lack intelligence. They lacked electricity, and those are not the same thing. Modern humans often confuse technology with thinking, but the pyramid forces us to separate the two. Because scale alone doesn't explain success, size impresses you emotionally. Precision should terrify you intellectually. Let's talk about alignment. The Great Pyramid is aligned to true north with an error of less than 0.05 degrees. That is not accidental. That is not luck. That is not trial and error. True north is defined by the axis of Earth's rotation. You cannot find it with a compass. You must use astronomy. That means the builders tracked the sky. They likely used circumpolar stars, stars that never set, observed over long periods, averaged carefully, measured patiently. This requires time, mathematical reasoning, observational discipline, in other words, science. Now consider the base. The pyramid's base is level to within a few centimeters across 230 meters. Modern engineers use lasers and GPS to achieve that. The Egyptians used water, sight lines, geometry, and repetition and it worked. Then there are the casing stones. Originally, the pyramid was covered in polished limestone. The joints were so tight you could barely insert a sheet of paper between them. Thermal expansion alone would destroy poor workmanship. Yet the structure endured thousands of years. Precision at this scale does not emerge from brute force. It emerges from knowledge systems. Which raises a crucial point. If ancient Egyptians could align monuments to the stars, level massive foundations, and control geometry at continental scale, then maybe the mystery is not how they did it.
Maybe the mystery is why we stopped believing they could. The word primitive tells you more about our bias than about ancient reality. People hear copper tools and imagine inefficiency, but tools don't define capability. Processes do. Copper is softer than stone. Yes, but copper combined with abrasive quartz sand creates a controlled cutting system. Slow? Absolutely. Imprecise? Not at all. Time was not their enemy. Time was their advantage. When you don't rush, you optimize. Experiments conducted by modern archaeologists have reproduced Egyptian cutting techniques. The result? Smooth surfaces, predictable edges, repeatable outcomes. Now consider granite. Granite is extremely hard, yet the king's chamber contains massive granite beams, some weighing over 70 tons, transported from Aswan. That journey alone implies river logistics, seasonal planning, precise timing with the Nile floods. Nothing here is random. Nothing here is careless. The pyramid is not the product of brute force ignorance. It is the product of deliberate engineering. And that's the point where people get uncomfortable. Because once you admit this was deliberate, you must admit something else. Ancient civilizations were not waiting to become smart. Moving stone is easy. Moving stone precisely, repeatedly and on schedule. That's where civilizations are exposed. Let's talk about transportation, because this is where most explanations quietly fall apart. Limestone blocks came from nearby quarries. Fair enough. But the granite blocks inside the pyramid came from Aswan, nearly 800 kilometers away. Granite blocks weighing 40, 60, even 70 tons. Now ask yourself a simple question. What happens if you drop one? You don't fix it. You don't recut it. You don't replace it easily. So transport must have been controlled, predictable, repeatable. The Nile was the key. During seasonal floods, barges could carry enormous loads. Water reduces friction dramatically. That's basic physics. But timing was everything. If you miss the flood season, your logistics collapse. Which means the pyramid wasn't built year-round randomly. It followed natural cycles, like an engineered ecosystem. Then there are the ramps. Straight ramps. Too massive. Spiral ramps? Structurally problematic. Internal ramps? Possibly. But here's the uncomfortable truth. We may never know the exact configuration. And that's okay. Science does not require complete certainty to recognize intelligence. It requires consistency with physical laws. And nothing about the pyramid violates physics. What it violates is our assumption that ancient people were disorganized. The inside of the pyramid is where it stops being impressive and starts being unsettling. Because inside, the pyramid behaves like a machine. The Grand Gallery rises nearly 9 meters high, with a corbelled ceiling that redirects weight outward. That's not decoration. That's load management. Above the King's Chamber are multiple relieving chambers. Their sole purpose is to prevent collapse under millions of tons of stone. This is structural engineering, not symbolic, not accidental. Then there are the shafts, often called air shafts, though they don't ventilate anything. They point towards specific regions of the sky, stars associated with eternity and rebirth. And recently, using muon tomography, scientists detected large voids inside the pyramid, hidden spaces, unknown purpose, not empty by accident, empty by design. This tells us something critical. The pyramid was planned from the inside out. You don't improvise something like this. You design it mentally before the first stone is placed, which means the pyramid existed as a complete concept before it existed physically. That is advanced thinking. When modern people hear tomb, they imagine a box in the ground. Ancient Egyptians imagined a transformation. To the Egyptians, architecture was theology. The pyramid was not just a place to store a body. It was a cosmic device. The pharaoh did not die, he ascended. The pyramid aligned him with the stars, specifically the circumpolar stars that never set. Eternal stars, eternal king. This doesn't require lost technology. It requires a worldview where science, religion and symbolism were inseparable. And that's where modern thinking struggles. Because we compartmentalize knowledge, they integrated it. Was the pyramid only a tomb? Probably not. Was it a power plant? No evidence. Was it a symbolic machine for the afterlife, built using real engineering principles? Absolutely. And that's the uncomfortable part. 
because it means the pyramid doesn't need aliens, lost civilizations, or forbidden technology. It only needs humans who thought differently than we do. The Great Pyramid is not impossible because it defies physics. It's impossible because it defies our ego. Every stone in the pyramid obeys the laws of nature. Gravity works. Friction works. Stress distributes predictably. There is no violation of physics here. What is violated is our assumption that knowledge requires modern tools. The Great Pyramid is proof that the science can exist without electricity. Engineering can exist without computers. Intelligence can exist without industry.